The hidden truth about Zebek and God Valley has finally been revealed in One Piece, and everything we thought we knew about the Rocks pirates might actually be wrong. Was Zebek the hero all along? Did Oda trick us on purpose? Let's talk about it right now. You guys know the drill. If you enjoy my One Piece videos and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like right now for that YouTube algorithm. And if you want to help this channel attain Devil Fruit Awakening by hitting 2 million subscribers, do me a huge favor and subscribe right now. We are so close. Finally, this video will of course contain One Piece manga spoilers, so please proceed with caution, you have been warned. 44 years ago, the infamous pirate Rox D. Zebek formed an overpowered crew on the pirate island of Hachinosu. This straight up legendary group included Young Whitebeard, Kaido, Big Mom, Shiki, Silver Axe, Wang Shi, and Captain John, among others. It also included Whitebeard's baby mama, Buckingham Stussy, and former Empress of the Kuja tribe, Gloriosa. And also, I guess Big Mom's chef guy was there as well. There were even more members of the crew that are yet to be revealed, but in general, we know that these were extremely powerful and highly ambitious pirates who came together for a common goal. But they still maintained their own individual goals and interests. They didn't pledge unconditional loyalty to Captain Zebek. They joined him because they believed that this would serve their own best interests. And the Rocks Pirates are known to have often bickered with each other and with their captain. There was just a massive amount of ego oozing out of this one crew, and so drama between them was inevitable. Rox D. Zebek himself was a unique pirate captain because it seems that his end goal wasn't to remain a pirate, or even to become the Pirate King. Zebek had much grander plans, and his ultimate goal was to overthrow the world government and become the king of the world. And this wasn't just empty words either. Zebek openly declared war on the world government, and he fought against them for six years until everything finally came to a head 38 years ago at God Valley. For years, our knowledge of the God Valley incident was extremely limited. We knew that a bunch of important celestial dragons were present at an island known as God Valley, and some of their slaves were there as well. The Rocks Pirates eventually attacked this island, and the world government became desperate to rescue the world nobles from Zebek. Goldie Roger and the Roger Pirates eventually showed up as well, and Vice Admiral Garp was ultimately put in charge of defeating the Rocks Pirates and protecting the Celestial Dragons. At this time, Garp and Roger were massive rivals, and yet for whatever reason, during the God Valley incident, they decided to team up against Zebek and the Rocks Pirates. This is extremely strange, but it became even stranger once we finally learned what the God Valley incident actually was. We were initially told that Roger and Garp won the battle, Zebek was killed, and the Rocks Pirates disbanded. After that, the entire island of God Valley was erased from history by the world government. It was likely destroyed like Lelusia, and it was also then erased from all historical record, making it as if the island never even existed. But even knowing all of that, there were still so many mysteries surrounding this notorious incident. Why were all the world nobles there in the first place? How did Zebek know they were there, and why exactly did he attack? What in the world could possess Roger and Garp to team up against the Rocks Pirates just to help out some Celestial Dragons? Why haven't you subscribed yet and smashed that like button for the YouTube algorithm? You know, all the big questions. After years of wondering, Oda finally began unraveling the dark truth about God Valley in chapter 1095 of the manga and the revelations continued in the several chapters that followed. God Valley was an island in the West Blue that wasn't affiliated with the world government. It was an independent kingdom, and it got the name God Valley because it was blessed by God with a lot of natural resources. However, 38 years ago, God Valley became the location of a horrible tournament organized by the Celestial Dragons. This is a tournament that takes place once every three years, and it takes place at different locations each time. One of the reasons why God Valley was apparently selected 38 years ago was simply because the world nobles considered the name God Valley to be blasphemous. They saw themselves as the true gods of the world, and some small independent kingdom had no right to refer to a god or gods in its name. And yes, of course, this is an extremely silly reason to attack a kingdom, but the Celestial Dragons are deranged egomaniacs, so are any of us really surprised by this? The world government straight up occupied the island of God Valley and turned it into the site of their human hunting tournament. Oh yes, just in case you didn't think that the world nobles were bad enough already, it turns out that every three years they pick a new island and hunt down its native population for sport. 
They also throw in any slaves that have been giving them trouble into the mix, and then they hunt them as well. The winners of the tournament are chosen based on a points system. Basically, the more people you hunt down, the more points you get. The most successful competitors will receive extremely rare and valuable prizes, such as a mythical zone devil fruit. Even before the tournament started, a young Sir Figurland Garling killed the King of God Valley for speaking out against the cruelty of the tournament. The fact that he killed someone before the official start of the competition actually cost Garling 10,000 points. But he wasn't even upset by the fact that he was starting the competition with 10,000 points in the negative. He actually said that he needs a handicap to make things more interesting. The people that were going to be hunted down during the tournament are referred to as rabbits, and there are 13 super rare rabbits who are worth 10,000 points each. There are an additional 150 rare rabbits who are worth some extra points, and one hit kills also earn the hunters an excellence bonus. Upwards of 200 world nobles are competing in the tournament, and these include representatives of some of the most prominent celestial dragon families, including Figurland, Manmire, and so on. The innocent people referred to as rabbits are given an hour to hide, and then the hunt begins. Among the slaves who were to be hunted as rabbits during the tournament were a young Bartholomew Kuma, a young Emporio Ivankov, and a young slave girl named Ginny. In chapter 1096, we learn that some of the treasures that the world nobles are handing out as prizes to the winners were apparently stolen from Hachinosu, aka Fulalet Island, the same pirate island that serves as the headquarters of the Rocks Pirates. Garp is initially on vacation during the incident, and he fully expects Rox to hit back at the world nobles for stealing his treasure. Garp doesn't really seem to care about this, but when he hears that his rival Goldie Roger became involved in the incident, Garp decided to travel to God Valley himself. Back on the island, Ivankov reveals to the other slaves that the world nobles are planning to kill over 100,000 people on God Valley over the course of the next three weeks. Afterwards, they will steal the island's rich resources and then erase the entire island from the map. Even though some slaves believe that if they survive those three weeks, they will be rewarded with their freedom, Ivankov explains that no one actually survives these tournaments. No one is freed, everyone is killed. There is no way to win the game. The only way to win is to escape the game altogether. Ginny has learned that the prizes for the tournament include incredibly rare and valuable devil fruits, including the mythical Azure Dragon Fruit, also known as the Uo Uo no Mi model Seiryu, and the Papa Fruit, also known as the Nikyu Nikyu no Mi. Ginny believes that these rare and highly sought after prizes are the key to escaping the game. The plan is to steal some of the fruits and then use their powers to escape the island. Ginny also managed to send out messages about what's happening on the island a few weeks earlier, and of course, she mentioned the lucrative prizes. And this makes God Valley a prime target for powerful pirates like Rox and Roger. If pirates disrupt the tournament, it will give the slaves a chance to escape amidst all the chaos. Luckily for Ginny, her message did get through, and a bunch of pirates suddenly attack the world government forces off the coast of God Valley. Soon after, both the Rox pirates and the Roger pirates make landfall on God Valley, and Garling and his Holy Knights are forced to fight the pirates instead of focusing on the tournament. Garp and his forces also arrive, and absolute chaos ensues. This allows Ivankov and Kuma to sneak their way into the middle of the island and steal the rare devil fruit prizes. Kuma manages to eat his fruit, the Nikyu Nikyu no Mi, but Ivankov fails to eat the Uo Uo no Mi because Big Mom arrives and takes it from him. As we know, Big Mom would eventually give this fruit to Kaido sometime during the God Valley incident, and she apparently gave it to him in order to save his life. As a result, Kaido became indebted to Big Mom later on in the story. Now, we still don't know how the God Valley incident ends, although we do know that Kuma managed to save the lives of at least 500 people using his newly acquired Devil Fruit power. That said, these shocking revelations about what the God Valley incident really was shed new light onto Rox D. Zebek and his character. They also bring into question a lot of the things that we've been told so far about the conclusion of the incident, including that part about Garp and Roger apparently teaming up in order to kill Zebek. Like, hold on, let's back up here. With the rapid pace of the God Valley flashback, and with the lighthearted style that One Piece is sometimes known for, it's easy to overlook just how messed up the events at God Valley actually are. The Celestial Dragons were planning to kill over 100,000 innocent people for sport, including men, women, children, elderly people, disabled people, everyone. 
there is absolutely no way for this tournament to be excused or justified on any level. So, what was Garp thinking relaxing on vacation and referring to the tournament as the Celestial Dragon's little field trip? Did he not know what was actually happening? Or did he know and not care until Roger decided to show up? I certainly hope that he didn't realize what was actually happening, because if he did know and he acted so nonchalantly about the brutal killing of all those human beings, then Garp is not a hero. If that were the case, then Garp would not be a good person in any way. If Zebek and the Rocks Pirates arriving on God Valley stopped the tournament and allowed innocent people to be saved, then the real hero here is Zebek. We don't know what exactly Roger did, and he might have been a hero too, but if what we were initially told is true, and Garp and Roger really teamed up to defend the Celestial Dragons and defeat Zebek, then they are the villains of this story. Now don't get me wrong, from everything we know about the Rocks Pirates, it seems clear that they are mostly self-interested opportunists who do whatever it takes to advance their own goals. They don't appear to be virtuous heroes who fight for justice, or who sacrifice themselves for the sake of others. But if they came to God Valley to disrupt the tournament and to attack the Celestial Dragons, then they are the heroes of that incident. The tournament needed to be stopped by any means necessary, and the people organizing the tournament needed to be dealt with permanently. Sure, the Rock Spirits didn't come to God Valley with righteous intentions, but they ended up doing the righteous thing. They fought against the real villains, and this helped the heroes, including the slaves, who were able to use the chaos to escape. At the very least, Zebek and the Rock Spirits were anti-heroes. They did the right thing, but for selfish reasons. However, the right thing is still the right thing, and they should be commended for it. In fact, years before the incident, Zebek had already declared war on the world government, and he vowed to overthrow this evil regime and become the new king of the world. Again, you might say he's doing this for selfish reasons because he wants wealth and power for himself. But still, it's hard to imagine that any ruler would be worse than the Celestial Dragons, and this is especially the case once we found out what these monsters were really doing on God Valley. If Zebek's goal was to destroy people who are as evil and murderous as the world nobles, then why shouldn't we be rooting for Zebek to succeed? From everything we know so far, we absolutely should be supporting based Zebek against the vile totalitarian regime of the Celestial Dragons. So what's going on here? Why did the God Valley incident apparently end with Garp and Roger joining forces in order to ensure that the world government wins and Zebek loses? Something doesn't add up. Even if Garp didn't initially know what was really happening at God Valley, he had to have learned the truth when he arrived on the island. So I'm just gonna come out and say it. If, after learning what the Celestial Dragons were really doing there, Garp and Roger decided to protect them against Zebek, then Garp and Roger are the villains. Zebek absolutely had the right idea when he decided to attack the world nobles and when he declared war on the world government. There are only two scenarios that can somewhat redeem Roger and Garp here. The first is that Zebek went too far and decided to start killing even the children of Celestial Dragons. We know that Roger found baby Shanks inside a treasure chest on God Valley, and Shanks is of course a Celestial Dragon from the Figurland noble family, just like the leader of the Holy Knights, Saint Figurland, Garling. So maybe Roger and Garb decided that they had to stop Zebek in order to protect innocent children like Shanks. The second scenario is that God Valley didn't end the way we have all been led to believe. Maybe Roger, Garp, and Zebek met up and came to the realization that the world nobles are monsters who need to be stopped. Garp and Roger then helped Zebek fake his own death and constructed an elaborate story about how they defeated him. This means that Zebek is still out there somewhere, waiting for the right moment to make his move against the world government. Now that would be interesting. And it would also explain the massive inconsistency between what Garp and Roger's values seem to be and what their actions were during the God Valley incident. And all of this really makes me think about the D-Clan, since we know that all three of these guys just happen to have the D in their names. We know that years later, yet another member of the D-Clan, Blackbeard, would pay tribute to Zebek by naming his flagship vessel the Saber of Zebek. So what is the connection here? From what we've seen so far, Zebek and Blackbeard seem to be much darker and more violent figures than, say, Roger, Garp, Ace, Dragon, or Luffy. And yet, they all share that D-Clan connection. Could it be that there are two sides to the D? The Dusk and the Dawn. The Dusk side is the dark side, and this side is represented by people like Zebek and Blackbeard. This is the destructive side. In order for a new system to be established, the old one must be destroyed by any means necessary. 
if you want to establish a new order in the world, you first have to dismantle the old one. The Dawn side is the Light, the side represented by people like Dragon and Luffy. This side has noble ideals and it creates the new world order after the old one is destroyed. It is the constructive side and it brings about the new Dawn. This is why we have members of the D-Clan who are so drastically different. That is why both Blackbeard and Luffy bear the same D initial. In order to change the world, you need both destruction and creation. You need people like Zebek and Blackbeard who are willing to do whatever it takes to overthrow the old system. And then you need people like Luffy and Dragon who are prepared to build a new system using noble ideals like justice and fairness. You need both the dusk of the old world and the dawn of the new one. Okay, real quick, do you think that Zebek was a villain, or was he actually a hero all along? Or maybe he was something in between, like an anti-hero? Let me know what you think right now down in the comments. If you're looking for another epic One Piece video to watch next, don't ignore this video on how Shanks being a celestial dragon changes everything we thought we knew about the world of One Piece. Link on screen and in the description. If you enjoyed this One Piece video and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like right now. And if you want to help this channel awaken the true power of its devil fruit by hitting 2 million subscribers, do me a huge favor and subscribe.